This week's challenge, you don't need religion to distinguish between right and wrong. Well, there's a number of things that were said in this challenge. Uh, one, of course, was the claim that uh, religion is kind of at the root of most of the heinous crimes of humanity. And uh, so right off the bat, I would say, no, that's actually not true. All we have to do is go back one century to see horrendous evil crimes, right? What many consider the bloodiest century in all of human history. And we don't find religious belief uh, at the root of that. We actually find atheistic belief at the root of that. And so you look at Stalin and Lenin and Pol Pot and Mao and uh, Hitler, I think there's a good case to be made that that was not religious belief, it was atheistic belief, okay? So there's a lot more we could say on that, but that's not where I wanna spend most of my time with this challenge. But just off the bat, I wanna say, no, I would disagree with that point. Okay, now here's the central claim, I think, is that you don't need religious belief to distinguish from right and wrong. To which I would say, yes. <laughs> That's, that's true. You don't need to be a religious believer to know right from wrong. And if you, if you are a, a skeptic, an atheist, a secular person, uh, and, and you've interacted with, with Christians on this, you'll know that most Christians who are you know, philosophically trained, apologists, we would never make that claim that you have to be religious to know moral truth. In fact, any kind of any person who, who believes in the teaching of, of the Bible, uh, if they look at Romans 2, the Bible even says that the non-believer has God's law written on his human, uh, written on the human heart. Uh, God's law is written on every human heart, and therefore, even the Bible affirms that people who don't believe in God uh, can know moral truth. Okay, so this is this is where we need to make an important distinction. And it's the distinction between epistemology and metaphysics. Epistemology, our study of knowledge. Metaphysics, our study of reality. Okay, so the claim that you have to have certain beliefs, religious beliefs, to know moral truth is an epistemological claim. When it comes to what you can know morally, the, the view uh, from the Christian is not that you need to believe in God to know what is right or wrong morally. In fact, you could be an atheist. You could not just totally deny God's existence, and I think you could be moral. You could know right from wrong. Uh, you could be more moral than, than me. You could be more moral than any Christian. Okay, so let's just clear that up. We, we have no problem with the claim that you know moral truth. What, what we're after is the basis of morality itself. That's the metaphysical question. That's the question of where, where does this thing come from? Morality, objective morality. What is the basis of objective morality? Uh, wh what's its foundation? What best explains it? So we see this thing in the world, that there are these objective moral truths, right? Of course, and that's, that's part of this equation. You have to affirm that there are objective moral truths. Uh, I'm assuming that that's part of the assumption here uh, in, the, in the challenge. So there are these objective moral truths, right? Torturing babies for fun is wrong. Raping women is, is morally wrong. These are objective moral truths. We discover them in the world around us and we, we ask, where does such a thing come from? How do you get that? Uh, and let me just give you an analogy here. Uh, look, do you have to believe in postmen? Uh, do you have to believe in the mailman to get your mail out of the mailbox and read it? Well, of course not. You could believe that there are no mailmen and you could still walk to your post, uh, your uh, mailbox every day and pull out the mail. And you could read it. And, and you could deny the existence of mailman, mailmen, and mailwomen. Okay, to be politically correct here. But the question would still remain. What explains that mail in your mailbox? Where did that come from? That's the metaphysical question that we're after when it comes to this issue of right and wrong. We wanna know where does it come from? What's the best explanation for objective morality? And what the theist is gonna argue is that God provides the best explanation for the existence of this thing. You can know it whether you affirm his existence or not. You can know right from wrong, but where does right and wrong come from? 
Now, on my, my view, the theist view, I think the reason why you cannot know right from wrong is because God has given you that moral equipment. He's made you in his image, so you, you can affirm moral truths without affirming his existence. But this stuff, morality, where does it come from? That's what we're after. So the claim isn't that you have to be religious to know right from wrong, but in order for there to be anything like right and wrong, objective moral truths, objective moral laws, objective moral obligations, you have to have a proper basis or explanation or foundation for those things. And that's the claim. Now, let's address this kind of final little bit of evidence, right, that they, this uh, objector points to, and that's the animal kingdom, right? Animals don't have any religious beliefs, and yet they show evidence of knowing right from wrong. Well, I actually don't think you really want to go to the animal kingdom for your examples of morality. Because you could pick and choose and say, oh, here, chimpanzees seem to cooperate, and this is evidence of morality, and you could use that one example. But let's go to the whole animal kingdom. I mean, let's look at all the examples. So how about that male lion who kicks out that old male lion from his pride, takes over the females, and then goes around and kills all the little young lions that were, you know, uh, sired by the former lion, right? He wants to get those genes out of the gene pool. So does that give us any example for morality? Uh, of course not. Uh, in fact, notice we don't use moral terms to describe animal beh behavior. A great white shark forcibly copulates with the female, but we don't call it rape, right? Because we realize there is a moral difference between the animal kingdom and us, and I don't think we want to derive moral oughts, moral laws, moral instruction from the animal kingdom. So that example fails in terms of supporting this claim that you don't need religion in order to give us morality. And I think we have answered a, another challenge.